first off, what is the big frackin' deal with the shoes on the couch thing? I mean, seriously, folks, does this seriously dent your fragility? Was it really so bush getting the shoe in the face? I mean, as a fellow lefty, seriously, who gives a real elephant-sized merda? Damn, if I had earned my way into the White House, I would curl up on a couch like it was my home. But Donnie, who sits behind or at the Resolute desk, Resolute desk can, grab a, can brag about grabbing Pikachus, but she can't put her damn feet on the couch? No. Nah. I think she should have just kicked them off. It's not a secret that the damn things are about as comfortable as a bra that's too small. I mean, full disclosure, I am totally that person in your office that walks around the office with her shoes off, especially when I'm putting them on my own chair. Get comfortable, I say, and give the chick a break. The criticism is completely, completely, completely unwarranted. There are plenty of openings for gasps about things that she does. But this one is just dumb. Kellyanne Conway is the only one. I mean, we got to give this to the woman. She's the only one in the White House staff that has an Oscar-winning makeup artist that, you know, tends to her everyday needs. Um, it's... It, it, I mean, you know, but it's no one else in the White House can say that. I mean, I bet she gets mistaken for Harley Quinn all the time. <laughs> I was, I've recently, you know, it's I get my doses of I are basically, you know, lifelining the liberal uh, talk show medias. Um, into my veins, and boy, how I have missed that neurotic Jew from Jersey. I, I, I make sure to catch Colbert regularly. Uh, I'm ecstatic when old Farmer John guest performs. So uh, this happened last week. He was on the Colbert show, and he, this time he did a really good job. And he reminds me, he reminded me personally, of that disappointment in the media that is not a partisan issue. Um, I had been holding back my annoyance at a lot of the as exacerbations of this unpresidentialness, like just unprecedented, unprecedented. Everything they say that 45 does is unprecedented. Just, I'm sick of it. And the right wing, alt right media attacking, you know, things like CNN and whatever, for calling them fake news, it's like I, I felt like I had to come to CNN's defense in some way, like I didn't want to take but. I don't condone all the the stories and the kind of hyperbole that comes out there. Just a, the same way I detest Fox News for all their fake news, or but there's actually lies, uh, different than hyperbole. Um, but not anymore. Okay, media, you're like that we dude guy that you go on a date with. That we this and we that the whole extended date through. It starts to creep you out at first because most of the time people right off the starting line that are those we people are just a bunch of love swindlers. Love swindlers. You pessimistically question their intent of the insincerity of the we. We should go on a vacation or we should go see that or we should go do that or I can't take, wait till we can do this. Um, but after the second and third date, you know, you start lowering your defenses and start re reciprocating on the possibility of that one, oh, we, that's supposed to culminate a big sense of we-ness. You're like, maybe we could. Hmm, how about we go on our first vacation together to a place up the beach, you know, romantic getaway. So you get sucked into that we-ness of it. And <laughs> then the other party never shows up. This is you, media. You hit me with that connection, and then it's like you, like I see you out with another girl at a colleague's birthday party. It, you're just tempting us with this Russian collusion. It's been 30 or 40 days now that you just keep dipping your toe in a couple times, realizing each time that you don't have a swimsuit to wear. I mean, hit the street, dig up the dirt, and then publish the story of the administration. Stop teasing us with this ha these half-truths. Get a suit or go skinny dipping. Stop putting yourself out there to be called fake news. You're too important 
to scrape away at your own credibility at this point. And I want to stop yelling at you. You know, this is very selfish. Selfish needs. <laughs> Um, next up, I want to talk about is the joint session speech. Congratulations, Trump! You have successfully exploited another person's pain and loss. Bigly. Um, don't get me wrong. Don't don't misinterpret my condemnation for this act um, as being partisan. Because knowing that the Democrats brought the kids into the session who were recently lost their mother to Trump's executive order, it is just as irritating for me. I mean, seriously, you have two different people, both victims who lost people they love due to the incompetent actions of the man that is actually ev there speaking that everyone is there to applaud. Um, no, the, they're just humanized props. I mean, these politicians just use them as humanized props. I think for a lot of people like me, this is one of those things that we just hate about politicians. Exploiting others' sorrows for your own tactics. Empathy for widows of the fallen and victims of family relocation or violence is not something anyone should lack. We should all always feel empathy regardless of what pin you put on or what color tie you're going to wear, what color skin you are. Um... We should all, always feel empathy for these people. Knowing that the actions that you make always have consequences and should always be aware of them. This is what point you need to take out from these things. There's real consequences for your actions. Um, I think such showmanship dehumanizes politicians and I think it's going to start backfiring because it shows a calculation of exploiting others grief and I mean this again for both sides I know I'm not the only one who feels this way because um you know I, I, I watched uh, the view the next day and Jed uh, spoke closely to exactly how I view it and as the cons she's the conservative on the show. I'm sure she gets, uh, I'm sure most positively that she gets some nasty tweets and comments because of her conservatism. But I, as someone who is not of the e ideological equal of her, respect her because she is always self reflective She uses empathy to avoid being a hypocrite. This is an honorable quality and it comforts me to know that I can actually have a lot in common with her even though some of our stronger ideals are most certainly opposed, which is something I hold on to today, is the fact that regardless of ideological differences, I know that the conversation can grow and evolve and actually become a discussion instead of a one-sided, if I say my point of view, the other side's, if you're not American, you need to move to a different country, you commie. It's like, what? No. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And that's not even a discussion. Um, so women like her out there from the conservative, conservative side, and I've been noticing it a lot more with Joe Scarborough as well, um, a lot more self-reflective and even, you know, the... I guess, pinnacle ideological symbol for the crazy side of the right. Uh, Glenn Beck has even, you know, been speaking out on the fact that there are real consequences for your words, for your actions, for your hyperbole, and for your lies, and that we all need to be more aware of this. So, Jeb, you give me hope, and um, other people like you give me hope that we can start actually having these discussions. Um, I confess, I didn't watch the whole speech. Honestly, after every time he speaks for an extended period of time, I personally get worried and anxious. And I just did not want to inflict that on myself again. I, I'm not a masochist. From the clips I did watch, though, um, I love to look on Pence's mummified face. It was worth a thousand hopes because it was like... Watching him read or watching Trump read through that speech with almost zero emotional inflection, you can see in here um, that Ivanka had had a lot of input on the social tone. And it was like parents 
Pence and Ivanka were standing in the wing of a talent show, nodding and smiling every time he correctly enunciated this perfectly planned and praised speech. Like, okay, yes, oh, exactly, yes, yes, stick to the speech, good job, good job. And, and I'm surprised, actually, that uh, no media outlet caught on video Pence's or Ivanka's lips moving it sometimes to the words of the speech at various times of their baby's performance. I mean, that, oh, that, if you could see that, it would have been priceless. And if MasterCard was actually this Discover card priceless. <laughs> um, so I end in um, trying to promote the fact that uh, for every mean thing, someone says about something you believe in, say something nice about something that you believe in instead of something negative. Um, hopefully that'll detract um, a lot of the eggs from getting involved in the conversation if and when it does happen for you people. Uh, for us. I mean, I'm speaking to anyone who watches me, maybe two, three people. <laughs> Have a nice day.